Okay, hello everyone. Today we're gonna to be making a video on how to add an hour meter onto your Honda EU 3000 IS generator. I think that's one of the biggest complaints about this thing is that, you know, it's an excellent generator, but there's no way to, you know, no built-in way to keep track of your hours uh, like a lot of the other competing generators have. So a lot of people get the inductive type that wraps around the spark plug wire and they kind of zip tie it up in here you know hang it hang it on there or something like that uh, where you have to open the door to look at it and then it's digital and you know the reviews on those things are not good they they tend to go out or the batteries die the lcd screen quits working then you lose all your data right so the plan with this is that we're going to use this old school analog hour meter and this particular one runs on 110 and we'll cover that a little bit later but you can get these that run on dc and you can get them that run on ac and uh we're going to put the we're going to put the one in that runs on alternating current and the plan is to stick it right here where this uh, rectangle is drawn so you should be able to see it uh, you know as you approach the generator controls and look at it. It'll be you know visible right there so In order to do this uh, you need a few things So first of all you got the owner's manual uh, you should read that cover to cover It's got a wiring diagram in there also that's helpful. Uh, you'll need a Dremel tool or something to cut this hole out right here for the the new gauge You'll need some uh, basic tools, tape measure, screwdrivers, uh, specifically one thing, this security Torx bit, which is a giant pain, and it fits this bolt here that's on the, uh, that holds the uh, control panel onto the frame, and I'll show you where that's it. And then if you're like me, you know, a replacement bolt for that stupid thing because you don't need that and, and if it ever breaks down out in the field you're not going to have that tool on you right so just picked up another uh, replacement bolt for it so you know you can do maintenance on the machine without a special tool uh, you'll need a long Phillips head screwdriver to take out the fuel knob here it runs all the way down in there like that and you just turn it and uh, so you have to take that off to get the uh, control panel off the frame the uh, whatever hour meter you end up using you know you need that with all the electrical connectors uh, for both ends you're going to need um, an o-ring or alternatively you know you can use uh, silicone but you know when you put when you put this uh, hole in the instrument panel and you put that gauge through there uh, basically what i'm going to do is just put that o-ring around uh, the base of it so when it seats down in here it'll create a seal and uh, you know keep rainwater and whatever out from dripping down in here because your battery is right down here so but anyway silicone or some other kind of uh, sealant uh, can be used for that too you need some basic just stranded electrical wire this is 14 gauge but you know almost anything will work whatever you have and then some wire cutting and stripping and crimping tools. So it's pretty basic. Uh, you know, once you have everything rounded up, uh, the job shouldn't take too long. So uh, the first thing that you got to do is take take these uh, hold down bolts off nuts. So once you get that, the front cover comes off like that. And the engineers at Honda did a good job because it will stand up all on its own just like that, which is pretty cool. So the inside of your generator looks like this. You've got uh, your battery, which you want to make sure the leads are disconnected before you do any of this so you don't get shocked. You don't accidentally fry anything. Um, and then you're going to need to take off the, uh, the bolts here that hold down your... Uh, control panel there's four of them before you do that you need to take before you remove the gauge panel you have to take this 
knob off so you unscrew it like I mentioned before and then you take those off and that'll allow you to pull back uh, the uh, control panel here just a little bit it won't come all the way out because obviously you have things like the choke and all the electrical wiring you know but it will pull back enough for you to do this install so I'm gonna turn the camera off and switch positions here and then uh, we'll get on with it okay this is what the back of your control panel looks like it'll pull out about this far uh, you shouldn't need you know much more than that but just be mindful of the uh, choke cable in there so what we're going to do uh, you can do this a few different ways is we're going to connect the uh, terminals on the hour meter to the back side of the 110 volt plug right here so if you look at the wiring diagram you can follow it but there's a hot and a neutral that goes to the back of this uh, back of that outlet just like any regular 110 residential outlet we're going to put one on this side of the plug on the bus and one on the other uh, with using the standard uh, lugs that are on the side of the outlet now there's a consideration right so this has a breaker fuse right here and if you trip like if you're generating you know you're running you're generating and you trip a fuse it will cut off power to this outlet which will stop the hour meter so you know in this application you know the theory is you know you're not going to be running the generator if you're not you know making ac juice to the outlet uh, in theory right one thing you could do is you could take this connector off here on the supply side of the breaker and you could put a piggyback connector here so even if you trip the breaker on the outlet the hour meter will keep running uh you know it's six and one half dozen of the other to me this is just a reference for maintenance uh keeping up with oil changes and stuff like that you know and if it trips and you lose a minute or two or five minutes here or there it's not the end of the world um again assuming that you're you know running the generator only when you need to generate power and you're you're going to be uh, monitoring it and observing the the generator performance and all that stuff so for simplicity's sake we're just going to run it to the outlet uh, without having to mail order any kind of special piggyback connector or cut this factory wire and splice in a you know splice in a lead for the the hour meter we're just we're just not going to do it that way but you could and it would theoretically i guess make it more accurate you know in the case where you're tripping fuses um, so anyway that's what we're gonna do um, I'm gonna cut here for a second I'll uh, make the hole in the uh, in the case there and then I'll make up the pigtails for the uh, connections to the hour meter and uh, back of this control panel and we'll put it all together all right okay we're back We've got the pigtails made up, uh, one red, one black. You don't really need to use two different colors of wire if, if all you have is one. Uh, you know, you're, you're really just making a circuit. So as long as you know what it is, it'll, you know, if you got just black wire, red wire, blue, green, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, you know, 10 years from now, if somebody else is working on a generator, you know, best practice would be to have, you know, a red wire and a neutral colored wire. Uh, but again, it, it doesn't affect the performance of this meter uh, for right now. So just use what you have um, And it should be okay so here's the uh, my hatchet job on the Hour meter hole cut out, you know, it's not real pretty I, I went to engineering school not art school, you know, so it's <laughs> Kind of is what it is, but these uh these hour meters have a bezel on around the edge so once you put this hour meter in the hole, it'll cover up most of that. Um, again, I, you know, just take your time. It, it's achievable. You know, it's possible to do it in a way that is perfectly clean, but uh, that's not typically how things work around my shop. So uh, anyway, <laughs> it is what it is. But uh, so the next step is to take the, uh, the spade into this, uh, these pigtails and put them on the back of the outlet. Uh, right here on the back side. I'll do that and then show you how that looks and then uh, we'll put it all back together and get this uh, get this thing done 
Okay, we got we got the hour meter installed with the O-ring. I got that uh, hour meter on Amazon, by the way. Um, it didn't come with these screws. I had those, you know, in the bucket of screws in the garage. So just any any uh, wide threaded screw would work, you know, just to get into this plastic. You don't want anything too fine or, or it won't grab, you know, like a drywall screw or something like that would work okay. <clears throat> and on the back of the control panel here it's hard to see but you've got uh, try to get my finger in here with the video this blue terminal here that's the neutral and then you've got on the other side there this red wire with the blue spade terminal so they're just these are just standard outlets or you know they have a common pretty common design there's a bus so the the generator feed is coming in on these big fat wires uh, right there, and that's one. And then our little bitty teeny hour meter feed is coming off on these smaller wires. Uh, and then again, there's there's enough uh, there's enough lead here that you could remove the cover, set it down, and then you know pull these spade connections off the back of this hour meter uh, when you're servicing the unit. So. That's about it. I'm gonna get it all buttoned back up and uh, fired up. Okay, everything's all uh, put back together. We're gonna do a quick voltage check. So I've got the voltmeter here, the multimeter connected to our hour meter pigtails. Got the battery hooked back up. Got the panel all put back on. Um, you know, from a safety standpoint, you should probably always run your generator with the cover on, you know, so all this electrical stuff is not exposed. But for the purposes of just checking this out to make sure we're getting the correct uh, alternating current voltage and everything to this hour meter, we're gonna do this just as a test and then we'll hook it up and uh, test run it, make sure the meter's working. So, yeah, you know, typical starting here. Make sure your fuel's on. Turn the eco throttle off for start, pull the choke, bump it. Well, we are getting 125 volts AC, and we're good. Everything looks okay. Nothing smoking, <laughs> so uh, we're probably good to proceed. Okay, it's all back together. This is what the uh, the finished product looks like. Pretty standard stuff. Let's uh, give it another go here. watch it here in a little bit just to you know run it for a minute make sure the hour meters ticking away like it's supposed to but uh, you know this whole install takes about an hour you know if you know what you're doing and you know you don't lollygag and all that and you have all the random bits like the, the spade connectors and the wire on hand it, it's not a very complex job I would again uh, stress you know you should read this there's a really good uh, wiring diagram in the back somewhere. There it is. That's uh, if you're not familiar with how to read those, it might might look like hieroglyphics, but it's uh, it's helpful when you're trying to figure out how to wire up a switch. So uh, anyway, that's the video. Hope uh, hope it was helpful. Thanks.